What's going on, everyone? Happy Sunday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for a study review for Sunday, February 4th, 2024. In today's review of a study, we are going to be talking about long COVID. Nearly one in four American adults who get COVID-19 suffer from long COVID. Some of you may be new to my channel and are probably wondering just what is long COVID? Well, many people who contract or get COVID-19 sometimes do not recover. When you do not recover or go on to have long-term symptoms, that is a form of long COVID. There are millions of people around the world and in the United States that deal with long COVID. Unfortunately, we do not have an accurate count of the number of people who have long COVID for many different reasons, such as not testing for COVID itself, uh, the at-home test, and data collection is not what it used to be from the beginning of the pandemic. What can be symptoms of long COVID? Well, there can be up to 200 different symptoms of long COVID. Here's just a few of them in case you may think or suspect that, hey, maybe I'm dealing with long COVID. General symptoms, tiredness or fatigue that interferes with daily life, symptoms that get worse after physical or mental effort, fever, difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, cough, chest pain, heart problems, fast breathing or pounding heart, difficulty thinking or concentrating, sometimes referred to as brain fog, headaches, sleep problems, dizziness when you stand up, lightheadedness, pins and needles feeling, changes in smell or taste, depression or anxiety, diarrhea, stomach pain, joint or muscle pain, rashes, and changes in your menstrual cycle. These are just some of the symptoms of COVID, or long COVID, and as I said, there are many, many more symptoms that you could potentially have. You could even have uh, severe brain issues as well. All right, let's talk about this study. Key findings, 24.4% of Americans ages 18 and over who have received a positive COVID-19 test or diagnosis have experienced symptoms of COVID-19 that persisted for three months or longer. I want you to take note of something. This is for ages 18 and over. Long COVID can also impact kids, so all ages can have long COVID, but in this study, we're talking about ages 18 and over. Also, again, there is no official count in the United States of how many people have long COVID, but we do know at this point it is into the millions. And mind you, we just had a massive winter surge, which is still ongoing. We're still on the backside of that winter surge, so more and more people each day are going on to develop long COVID. Oklahoma is one of the worst states. 34% of adults in Oklahoma who had COVID-19 have experienced long COVID, the highest rate of any state population in the U.S. It's talking about cities, long COVID has affected two out of every five adults by, affected by COVID-19 in Los Angeles and Atlanta. So yes, that's really bad. 31% of those affected by long COVID report that symptoms have reduced their ability to carry out daily activity. Now we come down to the study overview. Most people who come down with COVID-19 are back on their feet within a week or two, but a staggering 24% of U.S. adults who received a positive COVID-19 test or diagnosis report symptoms that last three months or longer. That's according to an analyst of November data in the U.S. Census Bureau Household Pulse Survey. In this report, we highlight the states and major cities where the highest percentages of residents report the effects of long COVID. Let's come down here and take a look at some states. The national average is at 24.4%, and this is for adults with positive COVID-19 tests or diagnosis who report long COVID symptoms. Number one, Oklahoma, 34.1%. Number two, Montana, 33.8%. Alabama, 31.7%. Arkansas is at number four with 30.8%. North Dakota is number five at 30.6%. Ohio is number six at 30%. Wyoming is number seven at 29.7%. South Dakota is number eight at 29.5%. Just under that is West Virginia at number nine with 29.4%. And number 10 is Indiana with 28.7%. However, some other states that are actually populated, some, uh, some of the more populated states, 
Number 12 would be Florida at 27.6%. Then we come down here to, let's see, where does New York rank on this? Well, New York, you have to go all the way down to number 45, which is at 21.6%. And there could be any number of reasons why a state is worse than another one. Did they take the vaccine? Did they take antiviral treatments? There's a whole slew of different things that could be a reason why one state has more long COVID patients than another state. Washington, D.C., if you're wondering, is at 16.5%, and they are down at number 51 and taking a look here, Pennsylvania comes in at number 41 at 22.8%. California is number 49 at 20.8%. Then they did this another way. Long COVID rates in metro areas. Adults with positive COVID-19 tests or diagnosis who report long COVID symptoms. The table below shows the percentage of adults reporting long COVID in the 14 largest major metropolitan statistical areas. Let's go through them all. Number one, believe it or not, is Dallas at 27.5%. Number two is Detroit at 26.6%. Then number three is Atlanta at 25.9%. Number four is Phoenix at 25.8%. Number five is Miami at 25.2%. Riverside is number six at 24%. Boston, Massachusetts is number seven at 23.6%. Los Angeles, California is at 22.7%, number 8. Number 9 would be Philadelphia, my city. Hmm, that's a surprise to me. At 21.9%. Chicago is number 10 at 21.1%. New York City is at 11 for 20.6%. Seattle, Washington is number 12 at 20.4%. Houston, Texas is number 13 at 18.8%. And San Francisco is number 14 at 14.1%. All right, long COVID effects on daily activities. Yes, it can really impact your daily activities. It can actually impact you from going to work. It can impact you from just doing regular things, such as a load of laundry or doing dishes. You could actually get tired afterwards, and that's it. You're done for the day. Nearly one out of three people who reported suffering from long COVID said their symptoms have reduced their ability to carry out daily activities. More than half of those with long COVID in Hawaii reported difficulty carrying out daily activities, and more than two out of five long COVID sufferers in Mississippi and Oregon reported the same. The table below shows the percentage of people with long COVID in each state who said their symptoms have reduced their ability to carry out daily activities. So here we go. National average for this, 31.1%. That, that, that's not good at all. That's really bad. Hawaii is at 50.8%. So 50.8% of people with long COVID in Hawaii cannot even carry out their daily activities. That is horrible. That is sad. This Something needs to be done. We need to come up with some treatments to help reduce these numbers. Number one, Hawaii, 50.8%. Number two, Mississippi, 44.6%. Number three, Oregon at 41.5%. Number four, Georgia at 39.2%. Number five, Louisiana at 37.9%. Number six, California at 36.6%. Number seven, Maine at 36.6%. Number eight, New Hampshire at 36.3%. Number nine, North Dakota at 35.2%. Number 10, Washington, D.C. at 34.8%. Now taking a look at some other random places. Pennsylvania is number 25 at 31.8%. South Carolina is number 24 at 31.8%. And look at Texas. Texas is number 23 at 31.9%. Connecticut is 31 at 30.2%. Oklahoma, believe it or not, in this ranking comes in at 35 at 29.5%. Uh, so remember, they were the number one state for the amount of long COVID, but in this case, they come in at number 35. New Jersey comes in at 40 with 28.2%. Uh, North Carolina is 42 at 26.8%. And where is New York? Is New York on here, or did we say New York already? There it is. New York comes in at 47 at 24.8%. They went on and took this another level. Let's continue on. Similarity, the table below shows the states of adults with long COVID in 14 metro areas who said their symptoms have reduced their ability to carry out daily activities. In this case, 
the national average is 31.1% still. However, take a look at this. Los Angeles is number one at 40.7%. Number two is Atlanta at 39.7%. San Francisco, 38.8%. Detroit is at 33.4%. Seattle is at 32.1%. Chicago is number 6 at 31.8%. Houston's number 7 at 29.5%. Boston is 28.3%. They are number 8. Uh, Phoenix is number 9 at 28.1%. Dallas is 10th at 27.6%. Philadelphia comes in number 11 with 26.5%. 9%. Riverside is number 12 at 26.5%. New York is 13 at 26.5%. Uh, and Miami is 17.7% at number 14. So that does it for this study. Going back up uh, to the beginning, what are the key takeaways from this? The key takeaway is that we really um, have further prove that long COVID is a real problem in this country and it is really impacting some metro cities, some states, uh, Hawaii, Oklahoma. Oklahoma is not much of a surprise just because of demographics, people not believing in COVID. Heck, they were uh, going around on social media back in 2021. They wanted to burn masks. They didn't believe in masks, the vaccines, treatments, all this different stuff. But then we come down to the number of people or the percentage of people that can't even carry out daily activities after having long COVID, after becoming down with long COVID, Hawaii being 50.8%. I wasn't expecting that state to be number one for that. And I wasn't also expecting some of these cities. Uh, Los Angeles is 40.7%. That was a surprise to me because I thought uh, maybe some sort of uh, health care would be better there, but this just go further shows that, hey, we need to study more. We need to find new treatments for this, and we need to find out just why if you get a household of, say, three people, two people get COVID, fully recover. Another person goes on to get long COVID and gets a bad and makes up a fraction of this percent of people that go on to have these severe issues. Like I said, some people, they can't even perform daily activities. They've had to quit their jobs. They've had to try for disability. They've had to, in some cases, sell their houses because it just gets so bad. We need to understand this better. And this study really shows that this is a real problem in the United States. And we need some of our elected officials to get a hold of this study and take a look at it because I think it's going to open their eyes and say, whoa, this is a real problem. And this could also be a reason for why the workforce is having issues. I know we're adding jobs, but for as many jobs as we are adding, we are losing a ton of people to long COVID. We just had the second biggest COVID wave, which, by the way, is still ongoing in the United States and around the world. More and more people each day are contracting long COVID because they are not recovering from their acute case of COVID. Their initial infection, they're not recovering from it. And this is a big problem. This number is only going to continue to go up. And while there's going to be so many people with long COVID in this country eventually that have been affected so many times, these percents may actually even go even higher at some point. Alrighty, folks, that does it for this review of the long COVID. We may have another video later in the day with the wastewater update. Haven't decided if we're actually going to do that this week or not. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, Give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel down below. If you know anyone that would like to see these statistics, these uh, percentages on how bad long COVID is, by all means, share this with them. I know it was an eye-opener to me. I knew long COVID was bad and everything, but uh, some of these states being some of these states and cities being as bad as they are for percent of people dealing with long COVID. Yeah, it's, it's just not a good thing. Alrighty, folks, I'll see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Sunday. Thanks for watching.